What it is, my Tano Peace and Grease here, bringing you another WDIF or Where Do I Find? And today we're talking about the basics of Kubro and Kavat breeding. Now, there, if you're looking for really specifics and the details and the minutiae of Kubro and Kavat breeding, there are plenty of great content creators out there as well as resources that can help you find the answers that you're looking for. I'm dealing with just the essential basics, and hopefully I can get you sorted. Now, if you're brand new to the game of Warframe, or you're fairly new to the game of Warframe, I actually recommend you avoid Kubro and Kabat breeding, at least at first. And the reason for this is because it can get very expensive very quickly. Uh, case in point, if we look at my Omega Lotus Kubro here, it I'll probably took me approximately 30 breedings, random Where's breedings, before I finally got her. Now, you may be thinking, well, 30 breedings doesn't sound like a lot, but unfortunately, when you look at the incubator power cores running 100,000 credits each time times 30, it doesn't take long to rack up to 3 million credits. And again, this doesn't count the typical resources as well as the DNA stabilizers and the stasis chambers and the genetic templates and, and everything else involved with uh, Kubro and Kavat breeding. So if you're just starting off in the game of Warframe, I highly recommend you you spend your time and get your grinding in. Clear your star chart, uh, rack up a good amount of credits and, and resources. That way, when you're ready to actually start breeding Kubros and Kavats, Kavats, you're ready to go. So when we talk about Kubros and Kavats, there are currently six breeds of Kubros in the game of Warframe, and there are two breeds of Kavats. So First and foremost, let's talk about the Kubros. So the first Kubro we have is the Chessa Kubro, and the best way to look at him is that he is a retriever. He will randomly bring back a piece of loot to its owner. Next, we have the Hurrah Kubro, and the Hurrah Kubro can actually make itself and its owner invisible. Now, I don't have to tell you how useful that is. Next, we have the Raxa Kubro, which can actually effectively stun lock enemies uh, so it's really great CC. Next, we have the Sahasha Kubro. Now, the Sahasha Kubro is just going to randomly start digging holes and popping out extra energy, health, ammo, credits, things of this nature. And we then finally have the Sunika Kubro, Kubro, which can actually grapple individual targets as well as use finishers. Now, the sixth unique Kubro is going to be the Helmet Charger, which can actually use kind of a charge trample, as well as its proboscis to actually uh, latch onto enemies and pull them towards uh, towards it, similar to a Ancient Healer, which is turnabout's fair play, if you ask me, when a Helmet Charger actually grapples and pulls an Ancient Healer to it. I do have to chuckle at that a little bit. Now, for Kavats, we have two breeds, and first we'll talk about the Adarza Kavat. Now, the Adarza Kavat can give you 60% crit chance, and you can get it to stack to unbelievable levels. But the brilliant part, or at least what was the brilliant part about the Adarza Kavat, and why it was the chosen Kavat for Eidolon hunting, was that its buff applied to operators, which was phenomenal. You could actually, within one or two shots, if your operator build was right, you could actually take down an Eidolon shield or even take down one of the Eidolon's joints. So it was it was great for that. However, DE has been using that dirty word, uh, <coughs> nerf, and the Adarza's buff will no longer apply to the operator. Sadly, this is going to relegate, relegate the Adarza Kavat to the back of the refrigerator you know, next to the celery in that weird jar of mustard, sadly. So then that brings us to the Smita Kavat. Now, the majority of people you see with the Kavat, at least in in my best guesstimate, 9 out of 10 of them are probably running Smitas. Now, Smita Kavats can give you a crit buff. They can actually refund your enemy as well as have a automatic reload on your weapons. They can reinforce your shields and even have a rare resource drop. Uh, for example, if you're on the Void, the rare resource on on that lo in the, those locations are going to be argon crystals. It could just spit out an argon crystal. Uh, but the most important buff that it could provide is double drops and affinity. Now I can personally tell you, whenever I'm farming Cetus Wisp on the plains, I always take a Smita. And whenever I see a, a Cetus Wisp from a distance, I'll have my resource booster clicking. I'll wait for my Smita Kavat to give me the buff. When it does, I pick up that one Cetus Wisp and I get four from that one Cetus Wisp because 
I get the initial Seed of Swiss from the pickup, plus the extra from the resource drop, plus two from the Smita buff, so I get four for one. Great deal, if you ask me. So, those are our breeds, and that's what we are talking about today. So, let's talk about the very first thing you should do. If you're interested in getting your breeding on, what's the number one thing you should do? Well, my friend, numero uno, I don't know why I walked away from the codex, but I did, is you need to do this quest called Howl of the Kubro. Uh, go ahead and knock it out. Now, Howl of the Kubro is going to get you started and show you the basic idea and the basic ropes behind breeding and using your incubator. It will also provide you with a Kubro collar. So get this done first and foremost. So let's talk about the incubator and its features, because in order to use it, we need to understand it. So first and foremost, I recommend that every single animal you breed, you create imprints. Now, each pet can only be scanned twice, meaning you can only use two imprints on it. And the reason why I recommend that you use two imprints on every animal, no matter how ugly or matter, no matter how useless you may think it is, make those two imprints anyway, is because those are what you're going to actually buy, sell, and trade in the trade chat. So you don't actually trade your pet, you trade the prints. So make a print of every single pet you, you create, you incubate. The other reason is with the more imprints you have, the more options it gives you and more variety it gives you for future breeding. Uh, case in point, when we hit uh, square on PS4 to browse genetic imprints, it's going to list all of the imprints that I have. Now, I am running low on imprints. I have hooked up a few uh, online friends with some imprints for various breeds of uh, Kavats and Kubro, so I am running low. But uh, I do recommend imprints, creating imprints from every single animal you breed. Now, where do you get these prints from? Well, quite simply, you go to the market and under the companion tab you will find the genetic code template and for 15 plat each you can buy them or you can come down here to blueprint which is R1 on the PS4 and for 50,000 credits you can buy the reusable blueprint once you buy that reusable blueprint it will be in your foundry and you can then at that point make as many of these genetic t code templates as you want now I have 11 in my inventory running a little short um, but I always like to keep a stash of about 30 on a hand, so I don't ever have to worry about making more. Uh, I can just make more as I go. So that's the first thing I recommend. The next thing we need to talk about is stasis slots. Now, this is where plat comes into play. If your initial plan is to keep every single pet that you breed, you're going to be spending a lot of plat because every single stasis chamber is going to cost you 10 platinum. Now, is there a way to continually breed animals but not have to purchase stasis chambers? And the answer to that question is yes. If you go over here, we'll go over to Echoes tab here. Under Echoes tab at the very bottom, there's a tab called Consign Echo. Now, this sounds far worse than what it actually is. But when you consign a pet, what essentially happens is you pay 25,000 credits and that pet is then taken from you. You lose that pet forever. It is gone. It is taken out of your stasis chambers. It's taken off your orbiter. It's taken away from you. And you can never get it back. Gone forever. The upside here is that frees up stasis chambers. So effectively, what you can do is breed a pet, make two imprints from it after you mature it, and then consign it. And do the same thing over and over and over again. And in this way, this fashion, you don't ever have to buy multiple stasis chambers. Now, I myself purchased several stasis chambers because I came up with some unique uh, kind of breeding uh, appearances of animals that I really did like. So I ended up uh, actually purchasing a few stasis chambers. Plus, it's always a good thing to support DE. As long as they continue to support this game, as far as I'm concerned, I will continue to support them just the way that it works so uh, let's see here let's get this bad boy out of stasis and we will move on so it's important to note that every single pet you breed on uh, will eventually its health will degrade over time so this is my uh, epic X uh, uh, Kubro 
which I call minx. Um, but its health, all health, pets' health will degrade over time. So you'll notice that minx now has 100% health. But over time, this blue bar will slowly drop, and this percentage of health will actually go down as well. As this goes down, you are going to have to apply DNA stabilizers to bring its health back up again. So, where are these DNA stabilizers? Up here in the market. Are you noticing a trend with the market yet? Uh, under Companions tab, you will notice this bad boy right here, DNA Stabilizers. Now, ignore this price. My price for six, in, six DNA Stabilizers is 5,000 credits. I believe the initial cost is 10 to 15,000 credits. Um, I will explain to you why my cost is lower in, uh, here shortly, and your cost can be the same as mine uh, once we get to that point. But figure if you don't have the upgrade you're going to pay 10 to 15,000 for six DNA stabilizers. But that's effectively where you're going to get them. And you would just as simply go to your incubator and when it's ready, your pet needs a little bit of health, apply the DNA stabilizers. Simple as that. So the next thing we need to talk about are incubator power cores. And I see a lot of people asking, where do I get them? Where do I get them? Well, incubator power cores for every single breeding of every single animal, you always need an incubator power core every single time guess where we're at guess where we're going companions tab in the market incubator power core now you can buy these for 35 plat each if you choose but you can also come down here to the very bottom where it says blueprint which is r1 on the ps4 and for 50,000 credits you can purchase the incubator power core blueprint which is reusable meaning once you pay that 50,000 and buy that reusable blueprint you can then come to your foundry and make as many incubator power cores as you want. Keep in mind, they do cost 100,000 credits each time you want to build one. So that is something to keep in mind. And they do require argon crystals. So if you have a stack of argon crystals and you don't need to build something that requires argon crystals and you're wondering what should you build so you don't waste them, incubator power cores are always a safe bet to always have on hand. Now, something I do want to touch on briefly is that your pet can die. I cannot stress this enough. No, and I don't mean an emission. If your pet happens to pass away an emission, when you get back to your orbiter, they'll be bouncing off the walls and they'll be completely fine. However, if you don't sign in to Warframe and you leave your pet wandering around on your orbiter, after an extended period of time, you will come back to Warframe and find that your pet has expired. Ortis will break the sad news to you. Trust me, it happens. It can happen. And it's a good idea that if your pet... You know you're not going to be signing into Warframe for quite a few days. Go ahead and throw your pet in stasis. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's a good bit of insurance if you know you're not going to be able to sign into Warframe. So, good idea to go ahead and do so. Now... When we talk about Kavat the Kavat and Incubator uh, Kavat and Kubros, chances are you're not gonna have even you're probably not gonna have a Kavat breeding tab yet. And it's important to understand that the Kavat breeding was added after the Kubro breeding, so you need a whole nother upgrade segment in order to just have the Kavat breeding. So where do you get this Kavat upgrade segment? And guess where we're going? That's right. Now there are three options to acquire a Kavat incubator upgrade segment option a is to go to your market but they do cost 175 plat if that's above your pay grade then your second option is to get them from a particular enemy now this particular enemy is your grenier enemy and they're called the hayaka masters and they tend to commonly drop these pretty often if you're looking for if you're wondering where the hayaka masters are in a grenier mission all you typically need to do is look for the big old fireballs because apparently Hayaka Masters love fire, I guess, they're pyros, I, I don't know. And then you're looking for the naked cats running around, the Hayaka Kavats running around, and that will usually point you in the direction of the Hayaka Master, but it, they do seem to drop the Kavat Incubator Upgrade segments pretty often, and I, I see quite a few of them drop in Hydron, as a matter of fact. So if you're looking for uh, a, a Kavat Incubator Upgrade segment, that's definitely an option, but you do have a third option. And your third option is your dojo. Now, if you're not in a clan, I do recommend that you do join a clan. 
because the benefits are very good. Now, I can't tell you that my clan, uh, my personal clan is currently closed. We're not taking new members right now at the moment. And that's because we're trying to keep the numbers small until we finish our last research project, which is the HEMA. That's the very last research project we have. Once that's done, it will be open to pretty much anybody as long as you're active on Warframe. That's the only stipulation. Well, you can't be an a-hole and you can't be a scammer, obviously, either. So now, depending on how your warlord has set up your dojo, you're looking for the Tenno Lab. And depending on where that room is, you may end up having to use a transporter. But since we set the Tenno Labs up, most of the labs up right off of spawn, this is what the Tenno Lab looks like, and the majority of the Tenno Labs. And so you're just going to approach this terminal, click on it, and right there it is, the incubator upgrade segment. Now, buying this segment is going to allow you to produce kvats in your incubator, so you do need it. But wait, before you go... There is something else you need to pick up here, and that is this little bad boy right here, the new Trio Incubator Upgrade Segment. Trust me, my friends, get this. The benefits are outstanding. It actually reduces your stasis recovery time by 30 minutes, and it also can rush that recovery with credits. It also reduces the cost of the DNA stabilizers, which is why my DNA stabilizers only cost 5,000 credits, because I bought this. And the DNA stabilizers last twice as long. And your incubation is reduced by a full day. So the, the benefits are tremendous. Get this Nutrio Incubator Upgrade Segment and the Kavat Incubator Upgrade Segment while you're in the dojo in the Tenno Lab. Now, as a side note, if, in case you're curious, it doesn't have anything to do with the topic of the day. But if you're looking for the Landing Craft Boundary Segment, it's in the Tenno Lab. As well as the Arcwing Launcher Segment, it's in the lab as well. Just a little FYI for you. So, we've pretty much gone over the stasis, the prints, we've gone over the incubator power cores, DNA stabilizers, and we have currently gone over the Kavat genetic code, or Kavat upgrade segment, as well as the new Trio upgrade segment. So we're almost there, except for one thing, and that is you need something to actually incubate. Now, for Kubro Kubros, that's an egg. And for Kavats, that's genetic codes, 10 of them to be precise. So where do you get these eggs and where do you get these uh, Kavat genetic codes? Well, you've got three options for each one. So the first option is in the market. Under the companion tab again, the Kubro egg is going to run you 10 plat. And the Kavat genetic code is going to run you 5 plat for one. But there are other options. For the Kubro egg, you're going to want to go to Earth. Now, ignore the planes, ignore Cetus, ignore the Iron Wake, and ignore ships that are in orbit. None of those are going to help you. You want to look for missions that are specifically on Earth. These missions will have feral Kubros running around. You just need to locate their dens, smash open their dens, and there's a chance an egg will drop from it. Now, typically on any Earth mission, you're going to find anywhere from three to six Kubro dens. Smash them all for a chance to get an egg. So that's option two. Option three is to look for an alert mission. Occasionally, an alert mission with the Kubro egg will pop up. Now, fun fact, if you farm a Kubro egg on Earth, you can only have one Kubro egg in your inventory at a time. However, if you farmed up an egg on Earth and then afterward run an alert for a Kubro egg, it still gives you that Kubro egg. So you can have a couple of Kubro eggs in your inventory at one time. The only way to do, uh, other way to do this would be to actually buy Kubro eggs with plat, at which point you can actually get several Kubro eggs in your inventory. So, Kavat genetic codes. So, if you're looking for Kavat genetic codes, there's really the best location I can recommend is the derelict, the Oricon derelict. There is a downside to the Oricon derelict, and that is that these missions all require a special key, the Oricon derelict keys. So, if you're looking for those keys, you would simply go to the market under Equipment tab, uh, more specifically, Keys and Drones, and here are your Oregon Derelict keys. Now, if you don't have any of these and you have the spare credits, I recommend you buy them all because at some point you will need them all. If you only have credits to buy one, I recommend you buy the Exterminate, the Oregon Derelict Exterminate key. Now, I touched on this previously in another video, why I recommend Exterminates, but effectively, 
exterminate missions work differently than others it's missions in the sense that with exterminate missions enemies don't continually respawn enemies non-stop so this gives you some breathing rooms and allows you to explore the area with constantly being bothered by without having to be constantly bothered by enemies so how these orc and derelict uh, missions work and how you're going to get combat genetic codes is you're going to take a frame into this mission that can kind of pause the area for example equinox with her sleep works really well harrow can kind of chain down the arrow area uh, ivaro with her sleep arrow can kind of put a hold on the area as well if you don't have any of these frames i recommend you grab a clan mate or an online friend that has some of these warframes my personal recommendation is ivara and you go into these missions and you need to remember that feral cavats are invisible so the only way you can see them is with your scanner so you're going to need to equip your scanner and walk around the derelict looking at everything through your scanner when you see the cavats you're either you need to shoot like a sleep arrow from ivara for example or chain everything down with arrow or put everything to sleep with equinox so on and so forth and then scan those cavats now here's the complication with this Cavat genetic codes are completely RNG based, meaning don't get your hopes up that you're just going to get a ton of Cavat genetic codes. Uh, I just recently helped a newer player the other day with this, and he scanned 12 Cavats and got one genetic code, which actually isn't half bad. I know it sounds funny to say that, but it isn't. Uh, I can tell you that I've scanned crazy amounts of Cavats in the past, uh, like two years ago, and uh, I didn't end up with any Cavat genetic codes. So. I wouldn't get your hopes up you're going to get a ton, but this is a viable option. Uh, there is a third option, uh, and that is on the alerts. Uh, occasionally, every few days, you will see an alert mission for Kavat genetic codes. For running this alert mission, you are given five Kavat genetic codes. Okay, five, just for running the alert mission. My recommendation to you is to wait for those alert missions and run them. If you're impatient, if it's something you feel like you can't wait to to, to those alert missions, you can't the orc and derelict is an option and i hope if uh, your rng is tremendous and you get loads of genetic codes i really do i hope you do uh, and i sincerely mean that i don't think that you will but i hope that you do put it to you that way so we pretty much covered everything and now you are ready to breed your critters so you'd have everything you need and you're ready to go right right so but before, uh, so that pretty much wraps up the Kubro and Kavat side of things. But let's talk about the Helmet Charger. How do you breed a Helmet Charger? So if you're ready to breed a Helmet Charger, uh, essentially what you do is you need a frame that has a fully matured cyst on their neck. Now I keep my Equinox for just such an occasion. And as you can see from her neck, she has a fully matured cyst. And there's two ways to tell if it's fully matured. The first is there will be a fiber sticking out from the middle of it. The second way is to see if the infested door opens. Now, don't go in, don't pop the cyst, just see if the door opens. If it does, then the infested cyst is fully matured, at which point you're ready to breed your helmet charger. So what you do is you come over to your incubator, you go to Kubro breeding like you would normally go, and then you would go to begin incubation and this is going to bring up a series of options so beginning a random option you can uh, use an incubation with imprints or the bottom option which is what you're looking for the helmet cyst here for drain and you would just click on drain and this would inform you that it's going to drain the helmet cyst on your uh, on your warframe for this Kubro incubation and you would click yes and thus your helmet charger incubation would begin uh, now fun fact about the helmet charger uh, and this is something that you may not be aware of or maybe you are aware of it but when the helmet charger initially launched it looked completely different than it does now uh, and as a matter of fact there was kind of a uh, kerfuffle about it uh, a, a little bit of a uh, controversy about it initially so when the uh, helmet charger initially launched, it actually looked like just a typical charger that you would run into on an infested mission. So this is the helmet charger that most people are used to today. But when the helmet charger launched, it looked like this. Yes, indeedy, that's what it looked like. That is what it looked like. And there was a little bit of a fuss about its appearance and so DE, as wonderful as they are, 
they actually went back to the drawing board and said, okay, let's redesign this, uh, let's redesign this helmet charger. And, uh, now it currently has the look we are all used to here. So, there you go. If you didn't know, now you know. So, that pretty much wraps up the basics of Kubro and Kavat and Helmuth breeding. And I hope it helps you out. Let me know in the comment section below what kind of cool or interesting breedings you're getting. And, until next time, peace and grace.